So we've had the carrot, now comes the stick. Hello, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining. We all knew it was coming, didn't we? We're talking here about the budget, which was announced yesterday. Bit by bit, we can see petrol, diesel, and even hybrids being priced out of the running. Of course, all of this is to try and facilitate that EV growth, people adopting these electric vehicles. Personally, I think they're going about it the completely wrong way, and I'll explain why. But first, let's get a little bit of context with this. So budget, first year tax rates for petrol, diesel and hybrids will double, but EVs are to remain the same. So drivers of new petrol, diesel and hybrid vehicles will face far higher first year VED road tax charges after yesterday's budget, with most rates doubling. The government has announced that it will be increasing the first year VED rates for new cars in an attempt to widen the gap between higher pollutant vehicles and EVs and also claw in more tax money. Drivers pay a first year tax rate for their new car depending on how much CO2 it emits. We probably all know this. Currently EVs don't pay anything but cars emitting X amount pay 220 and cars beyond that can pay up to £2,745 in the first year. EV buyers are set to pay £10 for their first year's VED rate from April and that rate is now frozen. All other rates will be increased significantly with the first year charge payable on petrol, diesel and hybrid vehicles pushed up. It's a real shame they've got hybrids in there but I'll come on to that. A Treasury spokesperson explained that means from April next year a new Ford Puma driver can expect a first year VED rate to rise from £220 to £440. I actually had one of these little Pumas on loan. Fantastically clean burning little engine with its hybrid technology. Don't need to plug it in or anything. It just charges away. I was getting 50, 55 miles to the gallon all day long whilst I had it. And you're going to be expected to pay 440 quid in road tax for that. Oh. Whilst a Range Rover buyer will pay as much as £5,490 up from uh, sorry £2,745 for their first year. The expensive car supplement which sees buyers of new cars costing more than £40,000 pay an extra £410 a year for the first five years will not be extended to electric cars either. No good reason, just because. Just another incentive, isn't it? However, the government said it may consider implementing this rate for EVs at a future fiscal event. Well, you can bet your bottom dollar it's coming for EVs as well then. Chancellor Rachel Reeves told MPs in her budget statement, to help drive the transition to electric vehicles, the government is strengthening incentives to purchase EVs by widening the differentials in vehicle excise duty, first year rates between EVs and hybrids, or internal combustion engine cars. The government is also maintaining EV incentives in the company car tax regime, oh no, and extending 100% first year allowances for zero emission cars and EV charge points for a further year. This makes no sense to me. I'm not a big fan of this tax regime, which goes for company cars, 100% tax relief on it. Because in order to make that make sense, you need to be turning a handsome profit and probably be fairly senior at one of these companies to get the car in the first place. I personally know of people who buy £150,000 top of the range Porsche Taycans using this scheme. Is it right? Ugh, I think that money could be better used. Anyway, I digress. Baroness Parminter, Chair of House of Lords Environment and Climate Change Committee's inquiry into electric vehicles, was disappointed the government did not go further. I mean, VED changes, the, t the tax regime on company cars being extended, how much further do we go? She told Car Dealer, I welcome the fact that in addition to maintaining existing company car incentives, the government has introduced new measures to incentivise consumers purchasing EVs, the, the rates, which the committee called for in its report. However, disappointingly, there's been no equalisation of VAT for home and on-street charging. Ah, so they want incentivised fuel as well. In reality, this means that for the 40% of those without off-street charging, the cost of driving an EV will be more. There's a good point being made there because these public charger stations cost a fortune to charge at. 
very likely, and I believe the stats still support this, you're cheaper to run a small petrol car than you are to have an EV and have to rely on public charger stations. We know not Oh, sorry, we know net zero measures need to be seen as fair and could be used to stoke division by those who oppose net zero targets. SMMT Chief Exec Mike Hawks was equally disappointed, a lot of disappointment, the government did not go further and offer any real help to EV buyers. I'm not sure you can make that claim. Anyway, he said the lack of substantive measures to support the new car market, in particular for electrified vehicles, is hugely disappointing. We welcome the extension of the plug-in van grant, we haven't even come on to that, a different video will do that, and company car tax benefits, but these alone cannot drive the growth and demand needed. I actually agree with him there, I'll come on to that in a moment. With the sector challenged to deliver the world's most ambitious EV transition targets, achievement of those targets is in serious doubt. There must be an urgent review of the market and regulation, else the cost will soon be felt in a reduced UK investment, economical growth and jobs. Now I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, so please do drop them in the comments section below. The obvious ramification for me here is by further incentivizing the purchase of new EVs, it just stands to hurt the used EV market even further and it's already struggling. Who's going to go out and buy a used EV with a potentially problematic battery that would cost a fortune to fix when a nice new car is so incentivized? Also, I think the target has been wrong. The efforts have been put in the wrong place here. The company car tax benefit, as I mentioned, I know of several very wealthy individuals from very profitable companies who use this to their advantage to buy very, very expensive performance electric vehicles. Surely that's not what the whole idea is here. And also, it's a curious one, because if you look at the last month of EV registrations, new EV registrations, 75% plus of those have gone into fleet purchases. So arguably, it's the one area with electric vehicles that doesn't really need a help in hand, yet that's what the budget has announced. What we need to do here is target the true barriers of entry, the depreciation, the inconvenience, the public charger costs. This laser focus on battery powered electric vehicles has hurt us and if they just tweak things a little bit to bring in some of these superb new clean engine technologies, what about some of these e-fuels that cut CO2 levels by 80% or more, amazingly efficient hybrids, these are all solutions which are here and now. We'd have a market and an emissions target that worked in harmony rather than this. We need to get to the point where we actually want to buy cars because they're better than what came before, not just because the government is taxing one thing and incentivizing another. We need to want to buy things. That's how the market works. And if you are going to be in the market for used vehicles for some time to come, here is a service worthy of your consideration. Vehicle score. Put the plate of any car you're interested in into their system. Petrol, diesel, EV, hybrid, doesn't matter. It'll tell you the good and bad points for completely free. And if you are serious about buying it, purchase one of their paid HPI reports. I'll drop a 15% discount voucher and link in the description below. But as ever, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and I'll see you for the next one.